Well, hello everybody. I hope that you're having a fantastic day, morning, afternoon, or wherever you are in the world. It's your brother Jerry Flowers from Redefine TV. And I would like to start a brand new series with you entitled Closed Doors. Because I've discovered no matter where I go, no matter where my wife and I go, rather if we're in a conference, if we're in a revival, or just preaching or teaching in our local assembly, if you want to get people to shout, if you want to get people to knock and buck, all you have to do is say, God is about to open some doors in your life. And there's a room that you haven't been in that you're about to walk into. And if you receive that word on the night, that's all you got to do. And everybody will start shouting. But what about when you're in the season of closed door after closed door? So I would like to entitle part one of this series, Will It Ever Happen? Will it ever happen? Have you ever been there? Will I ever get married? Will I ever get the promotion? Will they ever change? Will they ever apologize? Will I ever get closure? Will I ever overcome this? Will I ever be free from this addiction? Will I ever see myself the way I'm supposed to see myself? Will it ever happen? And I would like to bring your attention to Genesis chapter 32, verse 28. And he said, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have struggled with God and with men and have prevailed. You no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. This leads me to believe that the two yous inside of you, there's a Jacob you and there's a Israel you. There's a you you're trying to overcome and there's a you you're trying to become. There's a you you're trying to shake off and there's a you you're trying to walk into. And could it be point number one, this is not a closed door, it's a dressing room. God knows some people can't handle your Jacob attitude. Some people will write you off and no longer glean from you once they see your Jacob nature. So God will put us in a dressing room, not for punishment, but for development. There's some stuff I need you to take off. There's some patterns I need you to take off. There's some behavior I need you to take off. There's some addictions I need to break off. And God loves you and I so much where he says, okay, they don't see you how I see you. And you don't see yourself how I see you. I see you as Israel, but right now you're Jacob. And I'm going to close the door to allow you to get undressed. It's not that I'm not going to present you. It's there's some outfits that I don't want you to wear. And before you walk down the runway and get everybody to see you and your representation of me in the earth, there's some stuff I need you to take off. This is not a closed door, it's a dressing room. It's love. You and I know about your Jacob, but they're never gonna know about your Jacob because there was a season in your life where I dealt with that Jacob. I dealt with that deceiver. I dealt with that porn addiction. I dealt with that pride. I dealt with that anger. I'm working all of these things out, not because I'm punishing you, but because I'm about to send you. And God will never send them or send you prematurely. And he loves you and I so much, just like a department store, you got all these outfits in your hand. I'm about to try on this, and then I'm gonna try, look at this blazer though, I'm about to try this on. But for you to try all of this on, you have to take off what you have on. And God's like, okay, I don't want them to see your nakedness. So let me close this door. Uh, let me put you in a dressing room so you could take off your pride you could take off that lust and you could walk in your Jacob anointing. Point number two, there is value in being hidden. And a lot of us don't recognize that you only hide something for two reasons. Number one, for its value. And number two, it's a threat. We could use that naturally. When you want to surprise somebody with a gift or if you have children and you have a surprise birthday party or the holidays are coming up, you hide the gifts because it's something valuable and you don't want them to discover it yet. It's not that you don't have it, it's just that they haven't seen it. And if you think about this text in Romans chapter eight, verse 18, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. I want you to notice this. It says the glory that will be revealed Revealed. And if you're holding a gift in a house for a certain day or a holiday, it's not that you don't have the gift. It's just the time has not come for you to reveal what's already been there the whole time. Could it be your Israel is in you the whole time? Your promotion is in you the whole time. Your next level is in you the whole time. Greatness has been in you the whole time. Power has been in you the whole time. It just takes certain seasons, certain trials, or certain circumstances to show you what's already in you. Our present sufferings aren't worth of even comparing. So this means what we're going through, the suffering that we're going through right now, can't even compare 
to what God's about to send you away. And I'm telling you, a lot of us right now, what you can't stand is going to be the very thing that helps you stand in the next season. There's something that God is building in you right now. There's something that you're catching right now, regardless of what you're waiting for God to do. You could be waiting for God to send somebody your way where you could embark on the journey of marriage, not recognizing that your marriage will be different. Your marriage isn't just an ordinary marriage. Your marriage is an exceptional marriage. Your marriage is the one where everybody got divorced in my family except mine. Everybody's marriage fell off except mine. Your marriage will be the standard. And God's like, okay, if I'm going to create this and use you at this magnitude, baby girl, or my dude, I got to put you in a dressing room because there's some stuff I need you to take off and there's some stuff I need you to put on because I'm not calling you to normal. I'm calling you to warfare. And point number three, perspective. When will it happen? I need you to change your perspective. Perspective is everything. And waiting never feels like waiting for the individual who's working their assignment. Waiting only feels like waiting when your hands aren't to the plow, when you're not working and you're not grinding. Adam never felt lonely. He didn't even recognize he was alone. He was so focused and caught up on his assignment that God looked at him and recognized there's something that he needs to fulfill his assignment to a better degree. Could it actually be that God knows more about what you need than what you think you need and he will send what you need when you no longer can go on without that need? God knows what you want is not really what you want, so he'll send you what you need and as you embrace what you need, you'll discover Discover what you need is what you really want and so now your needs and your want are married so you know you need a prayer life but then you'll start wanting to pray so you know you'll need standards and then you'll start wanting to be pure so you'll know you need more income for where God is trying to take you and then you'll start wanting to save you'll stop wanting to eat out it's almost as if he'll match your wants with your needs and your needs with your want that happens when you finally shift your perspective maybe you're not hidden for punishment you're hidden because you're valuable and you're a threat. Maybe this is not a storm, this is a transition. Right now, we're about to shift into autumn, into fall, and the weather seems to get a little crazy around this time of year. Thunderstorms, windstorms, blinding rain, and it's all happening because the season is transitioning. Hmm, there's a word for you. Could it be you're not in a storm, you're in transition. Maybe it's not a storm, it's watering. Glass half full, glass half empty, at least you have water. I'm always on the back burner, at least you're on fire. Could it be your season is truly shifting and there's power and value of being hidden. It's Redefine TV, where Redefine Relationships Righteously.